Good afternoon and welcome to Collective Worship. I hope you all had a really good Easter holiday and perhaps some of you did our Easter trail. I certainly put out lots of bags of sweets and they all went. So I hope you had chocolate and rest and now you're back at school, you're enjoying your time together and enjoying learning. Today we're going to be thinking about the way in which Jesus returns after Easter and comes to some of his friends to explain what's going on. But first, let's light our candle and say our gathering words together. We meet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. The story we're going to be thinking about today involves one of Jesus's friends. His name is Thomas and it also involves Jesus himself. And the story takes place firstly on the evening of the first Easter day and then a whole week later. So let's hear the story and then We'll do some thinking. Our story is in the Bible. It comes from the book of John. When it was evening on that first Easter day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. But Thomas, one of the twelve disciples, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen Jesus, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and this time Thomas was with them. Again, although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hands and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Do you remember that after all the events of Easter, after Jesus dying on the cross and then Mary going to the tomb on the first Sunday and finding that his body wasn't there anymore, the disciples were quite confused. They were worried. They didn't know what was happening at all. And so because they were quite frightened about everything that had happened because they didn't understand it, they decided to lock themselves in the house and to talk to one another about the things that had taken place. But for some reason, Thomas wasn't with them. I wonder where he had gone. I wonder what he was doing when the other disciples were there. It doesn't really matter in a way. It's just an interesting thing to think about. But where was he when Jesus came to the friends? Wherever he was, he missed it. To the other disciples, the other friends of Jesus, Jesus shows him, shows them his hands. He shows them where the nails went in the cross. And he shows them his side, where the spear went at the end of his time on the cross. He's saying to them, I am really, really come alive. Look, here are the scars. They don't hurt me anymore. The nails can't hurt me and the spear isn't hurting my side anymore. But look, this is the proof. This is who I am. I am Jesus who died on the cross 
but has come alive, properly, bodily come alive. But poor Thomas wasn't with them, and so he didn't really want to believe. We're a bit like that, aren't we, sometimes, with all sorts of things. So I could say to you at the moment, I have a piano in my house. And you would have to choose whether you believe me or not. Do you think that I would tell you a lie? Or do you think that I would tell you the truth? The truth is, I do have a piano in my house. And here it is. I could say to you, I have two grandchildren, but you've never met them. So do you believe me when I say that? Do you think I'm telling the truth or do you think I'm telling you a lie? I was, of course, telling you the truth. Here they are. I could say to you, my favourite colour is purple. But how do you know that I'm telling you the truth? I could be telling you a lie. There are lots and lots of things in life where we have to choose whether we're going to believe what somebody tells us. And usually we make a choice dependent upon whether that person has told us truth or lie in the past. That's why it's really important to always tell the truth because otherwise people won't believe us. I want you to think for a minute. How do you tell the truth? And have you ever told a lie? What does it feel like to be believed? And do you think that Jesus was telling the truth? What do you believe about Jesus coming back alive? What do you believe about Jesus loving you. Some questions for you to think about. So maybe you want to stop the video and you can think about those questions or you can think about them a little bit later. When I was a little girl, I used to go to Sunday school and I was quite little when I learned how to believe in Jesus. And one of the songs we used to sing at Sunday school goes like this. And see if you can sing along with me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. So perhaps you can sing along with me this time. Ready? One, two, three. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. As I grew up, I had to begin to decide. Did the Bible tell me the truth? Does it tell me about God and Jesus and life and love and peace? I decided it did, but you might decide differently. I wonder what you believe. So let's finish with a prayer and our blessing. If you want to make it your prayer, you can say Amen at the end. 
dear God, thank you that you believe in us and that you love us so much. Help us to tell the truth. Help us to bring peace to others. And help us as we learn all about you. Amen. And a blessing. May the strength of God be in our hearts. May the peace of God be with everyone. And may the love of God be between us all. Amen. Have a really good week. Uh, Reverend Heather will be with you next week for Collective Worship. Bye for now.